on Tuesday, July 15th, we visited Chef Sarah's Cafe on South Exchange Avenue in Chicago South Shore neighborhood. Sarah's Cafe appears to be a family-bound place, so walking in, anyone should feel at home. Correspondent Miriam Keita had never been to Sarah's Cafe before and had a lot of questions for her. Okay, good morning. I'm here sitting with Chef Sarah and her brother. Can you state your name, please? Gene Phillips. Gene Phillips. How are you both today? Pretty good, pretty good. So do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. Help yourself. All right. First question. How long, have, how long has this restaurant been open? Well, we're going into our third year. It'll be three years on um, September 21st. We opened up back in 2012. May I ask why? Why? Mm -hmm. Well, it was an opportunity that we could not pass up. This place became available, and we had the right ingredients as far as the um, sandwiches, the fresh vegetables. I was already doing that type of cooking, so we decided to put it inside the cafe. That's excellent. What made you decide? to move into this area? Well, I've been in this area for a long time. I live about five or six minutes away. I'm over on 69th and Cornell. So this is my neighborhood. And it made it very convenient for me to get back and forth to work. It takes me exactly seven minutes to get here. At least you're never late to work. <laughs> well. <laughs> Shouldn't be anyway. <laughs> True. What makes your cafe any different from the others in this area? Well, our cafe is sort of a slash restaurant cafe. We serve healthy food. We serve salads, sandwiches, fruit, smoothies, and coffee. And we stay open from 7 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. So we wanted to keep that cafe effect. What cause or what are your motives do you have for this community? Well, this community right now where we are is a de food desert. We have no other places where we could get fresh food. So that's why I wanted to come here because these people in this neighborhood need to learn how to change their eating habits from fried food to fresh vegetables, stir fried vegetables and sandwiches that are healthy. That's an excellent, excellent way that you're thinking. Do you see yourself as a big help to this community? If you do, how so? Well, I, I say so because a lot of the people come in and say, my God, we didn't even know you're here because we're so tucked away. But when they come in here and see the place, they really like it. And they say, now we don't have to go downtown to a nice restaurant, or now we don't have to go to Hyde Park. We can come in our neighborhood and enjoy the same qualities that they get at the downtown restaurants or the Hyde Park restaurants. That's excellent. Well, that's pretty much all the questions we have. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. You're quite welcome. Thank you, too. You're quite welcome. And I hope you guys come back and visit us I'm planning on doing cooking classes, so I'd like to see some of you guys in my cooking class. Do you know when you're starting your cooking class? Hopefully before September. That's and they're going to be two-hour demonstration classes. That's really nice. You want, well, once you start your cooking classes, let us know because I would love to do your cooking classes. Sure thing. The coffee and food at Chef Sarah's was delicious. We really enjoyed our visit. While in the neighborhood, we visited the historic South Shore Cultural Center and spoke to some of the neighborhood residents. How did it change to you? Like, how did the community change? Community TV Network. 
and we aired some of our videos on Channel 19. Oh, uh, education channel. Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, shooting. That's great. I've been here 19 years. How long? You've been staying here 19 years? How have the uh, community? I'm 17, because I got my daughter when she was two years old. I was custody, I was sick. Oh, okay. She's 19 now. Walk up some, uh, Brianna. When I think about it, uh -huh. I see their windows. <laughs> Bullet holes. Oh. When I first moved around here, it wasn't like that. Um, I, I said, like, the third year I was here, I was all uh, the rain broke, went down there, and shot down the street. The police had escorted us from my house to the car, back to the house, and we were parking. There was about over 100 rounds on the street. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, it just changed. You know, then, um, now we got the lady there, she moved. She used to be a cop. People over here moving, so there's like one, two, three. That's why you got the big old dog. Yeah, actually it is why, because I just got her in November. I didn't But uh they broke into my house. twice. The back window, I got tired of boarding the windows. Put the windows in. You can look at the back of my house. There's still a big board over my kitchen window where they busted in and stepped off the deck into the house. Police said one of the protectors had their boats on the on the doors, they just took a lot more. And they said that they were gonna come back. I didn't think they were going to come back, but when I was in the house, I had to park my car on the street. Two guys, uh, one guy tried to push up my doors, and I caught the other one trying to push up my bedroom. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't say, uh, I didn't say, uh, I didn't say on the camera what I did, so when I tried to go at them, they ran, and uh, I ran out my house and tried to chase them. The police lady called my name, and uh, they went into the uh, uh, townhouse and boarded up right there. Mm -hmm. So when I did get a chance to confront them, you know, you know, of course they don't deny it, you know, so it doesn't happen to them because, like I said, the police lady stopped running down the alley. Did that ever make you, like, want to move from the South to a community, or you feel like it's your hometown? Well, only because I didn't move. One, this is the longest place I've ever been. Looks you know, like it. Uh, I didn't come back to Chicago until I was about 30, so I left to go to the Army. I came back. And I raised my daughter in this house for, like, 17 years. What's your dog name? What's your name? Hey, Corey, don't you just love that sweet, bitter taste of chocolate? Yeah, I do, in fact. Did you know that certain chocolates actually reduce the craving for sweet and unhealthy foods? Mm -hmm. So you saying instead of buying a donut, I should go out and buy a chocolate bar, which is more healthy? Well, not exactly. Even though our friend chocolate is pretty healthy and beneficial to us, sometimes it's not the healthiest choice. Yeah. Right. Well, according to leading nutritionists, even though the cocoa in which the chocolate is made is natural, certain aspects of, you know, what chocolate is made with make it unhealthy, such as saturated fat, carbs, calories, you know, all that stuff, which can lead to certain, you know, diseases such as diabetes. So, you say chocolate is unhealthy? On the contrary, even though chocolate is bad when eaten all the time, it can be good. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about a dilemma that's been on America's mind for a while, which is that chocolate is going extinct. That's right. Unfortunately, the chocolate makers of the world are saying people is intensively eating chocolate too much. The fact that we eat too much is making 
just making the overall population of chocolate deplete at a drastic level. Did you know that in the year 2013, consumers ate additional 70,000 metric tons more chocolate that was produced alone? Wow, I guess you learn something new every day. Yeah, overall, chocolate is good for you, but too much chocolate will result in chocolate coming to an end for all of us. This has been Hardcover News. Thanks for watching. It's interesting because it's like my uh, most of my jobs I've had were working as a cook in restaurants. This is a similar thing because I make food for people, but I get to talk to the people directly, and I just meet like all kinds of different people every day, and I really like that part of it. About two months. How you like it? I like it. It's interesting. It's, it's a new thing every day. It's just for now. It's uh it's an interesting situation. Can can you live Let me see who you trying to wave at. It's it's just uh it's, it's not a lot of money. This is just a side thing. Like I, I'm lucky, like I, I live with family and I don't have to pay bills and if I did this wouldn't be my main job. Has there ever been a day where you felt like someone judged you based on what you work at? Uh, let me see. I would say the judgments I get uh, are not specifically because I sell food, but because I, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I, I've, I've had, I don't know how to answer this question very well. I would say that all work is honorable in the fact that the parents are making the effort to take care of their kid. It doesn't matter what they're doing. If, if, they, if they're a lawyer, a doctor, or a garbage man, a street cleaner, uh, a street vendor, they, they sell newspapers, they sell uh, socks at the barber shop, like on the CTA, like whatever they do, it's, what matters is that they're trying to provide for their child and that they love them and that there's always honor in trying to take care of your child. Coffee, it's everywhere, in the hands of parents, accountants, McDonald's workers, and CEOs alike. The normally bitter drink has also sparked the interest of many teenagers, with the new sugary blends that are now being normalized by big chains like Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. But does the high amounts of caffeine in these drinks affect the growth of upcoming generations? And what is the real reason teens are seeking out coffee houses at a higher rate than usual? Let's find out. No matter where you go, you'll always find teens drinking coffee. Whether it's in the morning, morning train to class, walking down the street with friends, sitting in a local coffee shop, or at the Starbucks around the corner from your work. But why are teens so interested in drinking coffee? Well, there are a lot of reasons I've been drinking coffee since I first became a teenager. One reason has to do with coffee being seen as a drink for adults. My parents and other adults in my life have also drank coffee. So when I drink it, I feel more mature. Another reason I like drinking coffee as a teenager is because of all the interesting sweet drinks that are out, out there now. You can get almost any flavor you want in coffee. You can have it hot or iced, and there are even frappuccinos. And all of them still have the caffeine I want to keep me awake. But the number one reason that coffee is important to me is because coffee shops are a great way for me and my friends to hang out. Whenever I want to get together with my friends, we meet at a Starbucks or coffee house in the area and are able to have whatever drink we want while still being able to sit down together and hang out. But these are just the reasons I like coffee. How about we hear from some other teams? I started drinking coffee because I liked it. I started drinking coffee because my mom did. 
I started drinking coffee because like I kind of saw my mom doing it, so I was like, you know what? Let me try it, and that kind of happened. <laughs> I started drinking coffee because I would just like to experience to see how the flavor tastes. I started drinking coffee when it was introduced by my dad, actually. Well, I started drinking coffee because my mom never really had time to make me a breakfast. In my case, I don't drink coffee for the simple fact that I was basically raised to believe that coffee isn't really good for your health. I started drinking coffee as a teenager, and I used to go out with my friends to Dunkin' Donuts and pick up coffee and drink coffee at night. Some of my friends drink coffee. Like, I don't think anyone really pressured me. If anything, I probably pressured my mom when I was younger, like, hey, when are you making coffee? One of my friends, they do drink coffee, and they drink it to get them up in the morning. People my age, I have yet to see someone my age not drink coffee. Because, like, oh, well, the school I went to and I graduated from, everybody drank coffee. Um, other than me, <laughs> I know uh, a couple people that drink coffee my age uh, frequently, and I think it's probably like, a, I think sometimes it's, it has to do with like a morning routine kind of thing, it's a habit. Yeah, I would say my really good friend was like addicted to coffee, and it was kind of like her, you know, status or her label of herself being a an, an coffee addict, and she was like very proud of it. and like really pushed coffee for sure and would just constantly be drinking coffee. So I think I didn't really like see anything wrong with that at the time. Looking back on it now, it's like obviously, you know, caffeine is an addictive substance as well. So if there is such a thing as having too much of it. I think that with all the sweet coffee drinks they have now. I think they're naturally desirable for teenagers because they, they like the sugar rush and a little caffeine doesn't hurt either. Yeah, I don't. I think it's a taste thing, especially because there's so many different flavors. Some people don't like cappuccinos or espressos, while other people like do like that and things like that, so. Uh, um, kids going to coffee houses isn't new. It's been around for years. And uh, first it was like, like they had a boombox and all that, and they had a coffee next to them, you know. But now they're on the computers and they have coffee next to them. It's different, a little bit. But. Um, I know in some suburbs, uh, the coffee house experience for older adults can be somewhat marred by lots of teens coming in and suddenly taking over the place with their with their dour faces. But that's okay. They have their world, and I have mine. It's it's okay. There wasn't really like anywhere to go to hang out in town besides Caribou Coffee, so we would go sit in Caribou Coffee. Um, I think that like coffee house culture is fine because it's like, I mean, it's just friends are hanging out where they want to hang out. They or teens now they just want to be like they want to be followers. So like because their parents drink coffee or they see someone drink coffee, they'll be like, oh, hey, I want to try that. Because that's kind of what teens are. We're just curious kids wanting to try new things in the world. Wow, that gave a lot of insight into the different reasons teens today drink coffee. But now let's talk about something more serious. We've all heard the stories of different health risks that come with drinking coffee. Many people will say that young people drinking coffee has a negative impact on their health. but is this really true? I think that drinking coffee has health risks. Like I've seen some really young people drink coffee and we're talking about like people probably in sixth grade. I mean, the brains are still developing if they, and if they drink it at a young age, yeah. it, it messes with yeah. the chemistry. Um, I had a friend once say she don't like drinking coffee because it wasn't really good for her, and she think that she was too young to drink, be drinking coffee. Um, one thing I heard was that if you drink a lot of coffee or, you know, you start at a young age, you get addicted. Two cups is okay. After that, it gets a little addictive. Oh, you can overdose on caffeine. And I've done it maybe once 
maybe twice when I was younger. So I know that there are health risks which too, with too much of any drug. Probably if you have like a heart condition, the caffeine probably can't help that. Because when you're teenagers, you don't go out for a beer or anything like that. You go out for a cup of coffee because it's a drug. It is a drug. It's a very mild drug. And it's a drug that stimulates thinking. In my opinion, I'm still kind of iffy because, like, again, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't really know the effects that it will have. Well, even though those theories are commonly heard, there is no basis to any of these claims. The overall consensus from the studies is that there are no real risks that come with young people drinking coffee. In fact, there are benefits that come with having a moderate amount of coffee every day. The list of positive long-term effects goes on and on and can protect today's teens from issues that they would not even consider taking preventative measures against for years down the line. For example, the threat of getting Alzheimer's disease is not something that's on most teens' minds, but a study from the European Journal of Neurology suggests that if one were to drink a moderate amount of coffee every day, the person would have significantly reduced the likelihood of getting Alzheimer's down the line. Similarly, coffee has also have a positive impact on the possibility of getting diabetes. In an 11-year study of postmenopausal women, it was found that the risk of getting diabetes was reduced by 22% for those who consumed six or more cups of coffee a day. The most common misconception about the long-term health risks that go along with drinking coffee comes from our parents. As I was growing up, I've been told that drinking coffee will make you shorter. They tell me I would get short. It does stunt your growth a little. They said it was going to turn out to be short. Many people hear from adults in their life throughout their teenage years that coffee stunts your growth. But this is just a myth. The only real link between a shorter height and coffee consumption is the impact that coffee's caffeine has on your sleep patterns. If you drink too much coffee too close to your bedtime, your body doesn't have the proper amount of energy to grow to your full potential. But there are not only long-term benefits to having coffee. It can also help teens with issues that are faced in day-to-day -day life. For active teenagers that are in sports, drinking two cups of coffee after exercise can cut the muscle pain by 48%. For health-conscious teenagers concerned about dental care, strong black coffee is an easy way to prevent cavities, killing large amounts of bacteria every time one drinks it. And for teenagers who fear the high rate of depression in young people, multiple studies have shown that by drinking four or more co cups of coffee every day, the risk of depression goes down by 20%. So although there are people in everyone's lives that perpetuate the idea that if you drink coffee when you're young, it'll do damage to your health of your body and mind, the fact is that the only effect coffee has on your health is a positive one. A common health benefit that I have at least is that it increases your production because you are more focused on the, on your daily task, especially if it's throughout the especially if it's during the nighttime, where you where you get really stressed out to the point where you, you feel the urge to sleep, but coffee suppresses that feeling. Um, well, I love coffee because it takes the cobwebs out of my brain and and sparkles my thinking and and helps me think more clearly. I mean, they say it's bad for you, but you're gonna die either way. <laughs> I guess it depends on the coffee, because like there's different brands and different styles of coffee. So, um, so pertaining to teens drinking coffee, I think I mean, let them do their thing if they need something to like help them get through the day or something. I mean, it's their choice if they want to drink coffee. I don't think it's like cigarettes or alcohol. So if you need a production rush, coffee is the way to go. There are many more health benefits to drinking coffee than not. And um, I think that they're very good at uh, improving cognitive functions in human beings. They're very good at um, keeping the heart healthy. I think that um, when you're stimulated with caffeine, you tend to exercise more. So there's so many good reasons for drinking coffee. Plus it's fun. As a teenager myself, I think that if you want to drink coffee, do it. There will be adults in your life who tell you that it is not good for your health, and that drinking coffee isn't bad. But the decision on whether or not to drink coffee is ultimately on you.